I am David, your developer on duty, and in this video we will have a look at 5 common tips for Rust beginners. Rust comes with a lot of useful tools for development, making your life a lot easier. You can check out cargo-list to see a list of all available commands. Some of them you probably already know, for example build to build your project or run to run your project. But there are also some others, less lesser known commands, which are super useful. For example, cargo doc to build your documentation or Clippy to check for common mistakes and improve your Rust code. So let's have a look at Clippy. Clippy is part of the Rustlang GitHub organization, but you have to install it manually. To install it, you run Rust up component at Clippy and to run it, you can run cargo Clippy. Clippy is a linter coming with many rules and some of them can also be applied automatically and for this you can run cargo clippy dash dash fix. The linting rules are in this list and as you can see there are quite a lot of them. Let's see it in action and have a look at a very simple example. Let's say you have a vector myVec which is a vector of string and it's just empty. And now you want to test if it really is empty. So you could write if my vec dot length is equal to zero, then you print nothing in there. Let's see what Cargo Clippy has to say. So there is a method called is empty and cargo clippy tells me that I should use this method instead of checking the length. Sounds reasonable, so let's do this. Much better. Both are valid Rust programs, but with clippy your code style is more concise and you can enforce some level of consistency across your team. Let's run it and you can see it works. The next tip is to avoid sentinel values. Now sentinel values are values with special meaning. For example, if you have in JavaScript an array, one, two, three, and you perform the function findIndex with a condition which doesn't find anything in this array, you will get the sentinel value minus one telling you that nothing was found. The problem here is that you must not forget to check for these special values if you process the result. Fortunately, Rust has an advanced type system where you don't have to rely on those sentinel values for certain outcomes and you can explicitly model them. Let's have a look at an easy example. Say you want to get a name by some function, maybe get name, and then you want to print it. So let's just say sometimes you get a name and sometimes you don't. And we can control it using a boolean. And you return some static stir. Now if that boolean is true, we return bar, else we return an empty string. And this is the sentinel value. So if you return something, then everything is nice and you get exactly what you what you think you will get. And if you don't return anything, then this might be misleading. You think you got a name, but maybe you didn't, and there's no compiler telling you to check for the value of name. So let's fix it and make it more explicit. So in, instead of returning a static stir, we just return some option. And if everything is fine, we return some bar, otherwise we return none. So no need for sentinel values. And now the compiler tells us that we need to check it. So we write if let some name equals to name, we print. Let's run it again. No, we don't, now we don't print anything. Let's provide some truthy value here and now we return bar. So with the absence of sentinel values our code base is clearer and we won't have any surprises. 
The next tip is about making your APIs flexible and safe. Let's just say you want to create a function which prints the content of a file. Print file. You could take a path, which is maybe a stir. You get the content. You can use fs read to string. You provide the path. Let's just unwrap it here. And let's print the content. Let's just try it with the sample file I have here. It works. But what if somebody wants to use a path he already created? So let's say that path equals to path new sample txt. And he wants to use it in this function. Then you have mismatched types and it doesn't work. There are also other constructs such as osstr, osstring, and so on. To solve this problem, you can just make your function generic and you can, instead of taking a stir, you can just take something which implements as ref path. And now it works. And you can also provide a string. The next tip is to implement common traits people expect you to implement. For example, debug, display, default, from, etc. Let's just say you have a re recursive struct, which has an inner, and it can be also some struct. Now let's construct it. So let's just create a nested struct, which is some struct which has an inner and also this one has an inner and finally there's none. Now let's just say we want to print it to the console. So we write print line and we can say nested struct. And as you can see, it doesn't work because we haven't implemented the debug trait for our some struct. So let's derive it. And now we can run it. And you can see it works, but it looks kind of ugly. To make it a bit nicer, we can just write here a hash sign. And now it looks a lot nicer because now it's pretty printed. If you also want to see the location where it is printed as well as the name of the variable, you can use the debug macro. And now you can see the location, the name of the variable, and the struct pretty printed. Another useful trait is the default trait, which we can also derive here. And let, that lets us also just write default default to get the default values of that structure. Now if we run it, we get some struct with inner to none. The last tip is about consistent naming according to the Rust guidelines. Here you can see the naming conventions, for example, types, traits, and enum variants are all written in upper camel case, and functions, methods, and so on are written in snake case. The good thing is that the compiler helps you to adhere to those guidelines by warning you. So let's test it out and, for example, create a struct bar. And you can see if you run cargo check, that the compiler tells you that maybe you should 
use upper camel case here and call it a bar with a capital B. So let's do this and then that's a lot better. Also for those fields, for example, let's say we use here lower camel case, a field with uh, some value. Also here, cargo check tells you maybe you want to name it with a snake case. So let's do that. And cargo check is happier. In Rust, it is discouraged to use the Hungarian notation, that is to use special names to indicate the types. So what some people do is, for example, for traits, they call it I something, for example, I test, and uh, this is discouraged. So drop the I, it's just test. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have other useful tips, especially for beginners, please write them in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.